Thank you, Michael. Uh, this brings out my competitive spirit. Uh, and thank you for organizing this wonderful symposium and lectureship. Uh, thank you, Barbara, for being here and for sticking with me all these years, raising money for my lab. And Mother Turnbull, thank you for being here. And Gary Goldberg, who has also been a major friend of Barbara's for a long time. And this work is primarily the work of uh, Andrea Mote, who's sitting back there, and also Howie Kim, who is not here today, and Ann Parr. So this is more of a, per of a perspective over uh, the last several years of uh, stem cell uh, research uh, that we've been uh, involved in. And it's very difficult work to do because of the major challenges to affect uh, uh, improvement after spinal cord injury. And the question of which cell is best is certainly occupying a lot of people. So is it going to be endogenous or transplanted? Is it going to be neural or non-neural? Does it have to be a stem cell at all? And then if it is, which source is better and what developmental age of the cell would be best if you're going to transplant the cell and then should we really consider this as a plausible alternative um, and should we differentiate and in fact what should we differentiate those cells into and in fact there really aren't answers for any of these questions and so this is just highly opinionated um, the most popular non-neural stem cell is, uh, is bone marrow, but if you look at the results of many uh, phase one trials, especially in humans, uh, that are going on around the world, although it has the major advantage of being an autologous cell, um, there really isn't a great deal to recommend this strategy. Uh, perhaps the fact that they produce growth factors is the most compelling Factor. The uh, non-neural, uh, not the non-stem uh, neural cells, OEGs, uh, have had excellent uh, preclinical uh, results. Uh, Schwann cells from either nerves or skin, uh, they're also okay. And certainly, we uh, found huge uh, axonal regeneration in our few attempts to use peripheral nerve grafts. Perhaps the greatest number of axons we ever saw were with peripheral nerve grafts, but uh, they, they were mostly from DRGs, so I'm not sure where the uh, axons are coming from that may be producing some neurological improvement with the skip cells, but probably very few from uh, supraspinal uh, neurons. So with respect to non-stem, non-neural cells, uh, the activated macrophage story is still not um, apparent to, to us. The, the preclinical data was only fair. It was a surprise, in fact, that this went forward to clinical trial. Um, they didn't seem to harm anyone. And the clinical trial was rather clever on a number of uh, accounts. And um, hopefully this data will be published uh, in the next year or so. They have published some of it. But as you know, this trial was stopped because the company ran out of uh, money. Um, historically, we got interested in uh, neural stem cells, mainly from Sam Weiss's discovery that these cells were, in fact, uh, present uh, in the adult mammalian spinal cord. And very shortly after, we published our first uh, paper on uh, neural stem cells. Uh, and as um, Cindy has uh, pursued this strategy of endogenous, we spent uh, several years pursuing this idea of stimulating what's present in the spinal cord to uh, produce neurological uh, recovery. As you know, in 
uh, in vertebrates, these cells can result in complete uh, regeneration of the spinal cord. So um, we stimulated these cells with growth factors and really uh, could uh, enhance proliferation of these cells following trauma and in fact found some improvement in neurological recovery, but it was rather small improvement. And we have virtually given up this strategy, although having spent many years at it, um, because of the uh, minimal recovery that occurred. <laughs> I think this shows why that is the case, that we are dealing with such profound injuries that three months later after that acute hemorrhagic lesion, this is what we find. And now we see this little bit of, pro of proliferation of endogenous ependymal uh, region cells and it's really beyond imagination that this is going to be a winner, but Cindy, we're happy to have you carrying the torch for this uh, potential uh, strategy. So we've uh, completely changed over in our laboratory to transplanted uh, cells. And obviously this has reached uh, clinical uh, levels of activity. Uh, two trials, the Geron trial, uh, and now the Stem Cells Inc. trial in Zurich, and we're very pleased to have Armin Kurt here today, perhaps to tell us uh, about this. Um, the Geron trial was, of course, in acute cases, up to 14 days, and sadly, it's finished. They only uh, entered four cases. They have very difficult uh, eligibility criteria, and for lack of funding, the trial was terminated. And um, so there's another example of loss of uh, funding uh, interfering with spinal cord injury research because we really wanted this to proceed. Um, the, my choice for spinal cord repair is uh, neural stem cells from the adult uh, spinal cord. Um, and we have had um, a good time uh, looking at them, and you could argue, you know, why a spinal cord source of cells rather than a brain source, and there isn't a lot of difference between them. And in fact, in Michael's laboratory, they've had excellent uh, results, both acute and chronic models, and so have we in um, an acute uh, model. and. Um, and Parr was the principal uh, uh, person involved in this project and just briefly uh, showing the extensive uh, survival of these cells after spinal cord injury and a very remarkable improvement uh, so that you see the, there's about a five point spread on the BBB between the spinal cord derived stem cells and controls. And this is one of the most uh, prominent differences between treated and control groups using the BBB scale, which, has, which was confirmed on ladder walk as well. So a rather impressive uh, functional improvement. And Survival, however, is a problem with these cells. And we've tried a number of strategies to bump up uh, survival, but it still is a major uh, problem for us. In fact, unfortunately, the bone marrow-derived cells have greater survival, but useless uh, functionally. And people have attributed survival to a whole bunch of factors, and in fact, we really don't know which one of these is the winning uh, strategy. Should we be concentrating on remyelination, uh, or should we be thinking about uh, improving the vascularity with our transplants, and what is the mechanism of uh, recovery that we uh, see? Um, one of our recent uh, papers is here, 
and um, this, Andrea presented this to you last year, and it's now been uh, published where we've actually been able to take um, human adult spinal cord derived stem cells and grow them in sufficient numbers uh, to transplant them into rats and um, in vitro uh, they do behave like uh, stem cells uh, uh, should behave and they do uh, have multipotentiality uh, uh, producing uh, astrocytes, oligos and nerve cells and when we transplant them and identify them with, uh, with these human uh, antibodies, uh, H. Uh, mito and H. nuke, we actually again demonstrate that these are multipotential uh, in uh, vivo in rats with spinal cord uh, injury. So this is now another potential candidate uh, for um, possible clinical translation. And strategies to try to enhance stem cell survival have also occupied us uh, to uh, use scaffolds to pre-differentiate the cells, and this is Howie Kim's work, which really showed a remarkable ability to enhance uh, survival and to influence differentiation by uh, pre-incubation with agents such as cyclic uh, AMP. Uh, we, we showed a huge neuronal uh, propensity uh, for uh, differentiation as a result of cyclic AMP and an improvement in survival. Uh, other strategies to combine with stem cells because it's unlikely that that's going to be sufficient, especially in um, uh, chronic models, uh, con chondroitinase and antinoco, etc. So there still is, uh, unfortunately, many uh, un unanswered questions. And the issue of uh, iPSCs, yes, they're extremely attractive because of the autologous uh, aspect of it, but in fact, uh, there still is continuing concern about the production of uh, tumors. And the same thing with growth factors. Uh, when we use great growth factors, we could bump up the survival, but we also bumped up the proliferation tendency.